Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Right, let's get this display up. Might have to put some extra solder on, we'll see how we go. Not every pin is soldered, only uses a fraction of them. Less than half the pins are actually used. That's stick and go. In fact, I might move it to, I don't know, over here. How's that? It's got a double sided tape on there still, but I need to make sure it's actually going to come out. So we'll cut through that tape. Let's get the spudger. Oh, well, it was coming out. Reach the other side. It is coming better. Okay, bits of glass going everywhere. So it looks like it's basically out. Okay, there we go. Last piece of foam, and she's out. Such a shame, but oh well. What are you going to do? Well, what I'm doing right now, isn't it, really? So, that foam, it's almost the right height for the thing I want to put in. And hopefully it will just drop in. If the holes are cleared out enough. There you go. Look at that. I do want a little bit of clearance, because I don't actually want it rubbing on the, on the panel here. But I do want to put some more film on this to make it disappear more. Because right now it's a little bit obvious to see it. I need to put some more film in here to make that all disappear. But anyway, so far so good. It actually goes in. And there is a clearance gap if I have it right there. There is a gap, so that's good. It means I've got plenty of room to put some film in here to thicken it up and to try and hide all that. Hopefully that'll make it go too dark. But I'll worry about that once I get the thing actually working. So I just stuck down the display, I use some double sided tape, I use a couple of layers, stuck a bit, colour bits over here and one more piece in the middle here just to help support the middle of it. And that's going to make sure it's bedded down on the back of the front panel here so the header is actually resting against it because the height is actually back exactly the same with the tape to line up with the header so it's all the same height across, nice and uniform. And now it's got to solder the thing in. Right, it's time to solder this in. Put the solder on up. So it's stuck down and hopefully it will work, fingers crossed. Solder it in first, then we'll find out. In fact, there's probably actually, to be honest, there's probably enough contact resistance on this right now to turn it on. Because these are touching all the sides of the pads and the through roll wires and stuff. It could almost work now, actually. This is going to be the awkward, my arm's going to be kind of in the way. Right, let's power up for the first time and see what happens. Uh, have I forgotten anything? Let's double check my list. Pull power. Change the length of zero volts. Change resistors. Short the resistors. Yep, I think we're good. I didn't have any other notes about things I needed to worry about changing. Are you ready for the magic smoke, people? What's going to happen? Let's turn some of these lights off, I was being drowned out. Here we go. Hey! We have that bit. Well, that part's working. The voltage enunciator is on. Is that a correct one? <laughs> it is! Now I'll put the panel over. Slightly better. So you can see the voltage enunciator, but it's not very clear. That's what I was worried about. So, AC, and that says millivolts, that's not right. <laughs> I made a mistake. Oh dear, what have I done there? Anyway, okay. Mind you, it says millivolts, maybe it's millivolts AC. No, it can't be right. That'd be millivolts AC. I've got the AC and the millivolts back to front on here. How do I do that? Yeah, look at that. Whoops. <laughs> First mistake. But the announcer is not very clear anyway, I'm not liking that. 
The supply itself looks good. Nine shatters, not heavy. Uh, killer arms. You see the dots come up for the word error because normally on the Datron displays that dot is up here by the R so it forms like a curled R um, so I knew that would happen but I thought it probably won't really matter it's I think that's fine you don't really notice it that much it's okay this is on killer ohms let's chuck a jumper on here so now DC 100 says volts AC whoops oh well <laughs> Maybe it's sort of part of the manual where it wasn't clear. Some bits which are hard to read. So I'd actually look at that, the M and the AC. I should check those to see if the manual has got a, a discrepancy there. It is fixable though. I could actually just cut the tracks on the back of there and fix it. Like I said, I'm not happy with that display anyway. All right, so I've got the PDVS2 Mini hooked up to it. If you haven't got one of these, make sure you go and check them out in johnston.com. Go and check them out. Go and buy one. Excellent little things to have. So. This is generating one volt, and I've got this auto scaling, one volt scale right now. And you see it's fluctuating around a little bit. This isn't this that's doing that, it's the meter. So even when I had the jumping jumper on here, it was still doing it. So I think that needs recapping on the power supply, but it looks like the basic accuracy, the calibration, is looking like it's bang on. So let's go up to 10 volts. Same deal, jumping around. Accuracy is looking pretty good. Input filter. Yep, not bad. Not bad at all. That part of the display is working well. The enunciator is I'm not happy with. As I expected, I didn't think that would be good enough. That's not right. That's come out nice and clean. It's nice and bright. It doesn't look like it's over bright, you know, like it's being overdriven. So that seems fine. Yeah, it's not bad. This digit here's got the brightness changing very slightly. And I'm looking at these ones in this particular sequence. And I'm just seeing it's changing very slightly depending on what this digit here is doing. So I think because each digit is individual, there's capacitors on the base of the transistors that's still the switching and it's actually powered through those capacitors so I'm actually thinking those capacitors are affecting the timing very slightly from discharge, you know, it's basically an RC circuit through the transistor itself and it might be the timing's changing very slightly because of what digits it's displaying so if it's displaying a different digit over here it's on more so if I'm showing all zeros here when that says all zeros that's full brightness when it says a one that's dimming down a little bit so I think that it's due with the switching of those transistors where the capacitors are in series with the switching lines. Not a big deal, it's only really subtle. It may mean those capacitors have to be changed or removed altogether. So I checked the temperatures on this board. Here's my little thermal camera here. Before it was getting hot around here, that's at 175, sorry, minus 175 volt supply was coming in, which I've now removed. I'll put a jumper in here and it's all fine now. So there's no heat around the area really. Nothing really shows up. It's reflection off the back of the panel here, so ignore that one. The rest of the chips and stuff look fine. If we get closer. Oh, we're at 30, 34 degrees. They're not really being stressed at all, but it looks, it looks fine. This has been on for about 10 minutes now, maybe. It's basically 34 degrees. Hottest point is 33.8. And some are cold than others. Also depends on what's displaying at the time as well. So actually, let's actually um, increase the display digits on this. Let's make it display a lot more. So it's working a little bit harder. And we'll see if that changes those temperatures at all. Basically, the driving area is looking fine. The resistors are getting warm. These ones there. That's what's showing up. That's fine. I mean, for resistors to be 35, yeah, that's nothing at all wrong there. Transistors, nothing at all. Down here, we've got a hot spot. Just there. That is the MCM6810P, which is not really related to the driving circuitry at all. So that's just a controller. And that's fine. That's like normal temperature. That's obviously what it runs at. If, what we would be worried about is this chip over here, that one, because that's got a drive of the transistors and that seems to be basically cold. If I put my finger on it, and you'll see a hot spot in a second when I take my finger away. There you go. So, nothing. Absolutely fine. So, the only hottest thing on here is basically those resistors, which is expected, they're going to be, you know, getting a little bit heated. They've changed slightly now, I've put the other um, digits on there. They've changed the profile slightly there, got a little warmer, but still 35 degrees. And I'll see that chip down there, which is 46. All fine. So I'm playing around with these films. I'll just try different films. The red one here and this purple one do the best effects for filtering out the background of the display, the actual you know, the front faces of the digits. So the purple one does quite a nice job there. Takes it all right down. Really hides the background really well. But it does take a lot of brightness off the digits as well. It does take quite a bit off. You can see how much clearer that gets just by doing that. 
And if I do the rib one instead, it helps slightly. The, the digits stay basically the same brightness. There's very little brightness change on the, on the segments, but the background is still very visible, as you can see. So I'm kind of torn between which one I'd use. I don't know. So I've had a lot of messing around. I think I've settled on a way which I could set this up, and I'm quite happy with it. Required some more modifications to what I originally did. These links here have been put in to replace the capacitors. All the capacitors have been taken out, put links in instead. So there's the direct DC drive to the transistors. No more capacitors in series. All the links I've put in here I've taken out apart from three. So what I've done is I've replaced these with diodes instead. The reason these are in here instead of resistors, which is what was in there originally, is at least the diodes are going to give a fairly consistent voltage drop. Each one will be about the same, around 0.6 volts or so. The effect on the display brightness is negligible if you've got one segment on versus all eight segments on. It's almost no difference. It's imperceivable. By doing it with diodes, I'm still getting a slight voltage drop there. What that's done is it's allowed me to put links in. It's not done properly yet, but there's a link in this one, which is R20, R37, and R34, I think it was. They've got direct links. What it is, that means that this is driving the digits. So those three digits are slightly brighter. So one of those digits is the enunciator for the plus and minus symbol, also the very first one on display when it does certain ranges and certain voltage readings and stuff like that. And the very first digit will be slightly higher and the other two are for the enunciators at the end of them, like the AC, volts, ohm, stuff like that, all those enunciators on that end. So they run slightly brighter as well, so driving those LEDs a little bit harder, because those LEDs do need to be driven a little bit harder. They have a higher voltage rating, stuff like that, so they need a bit more drive. So I've done it this way to create a higher drive for the enunciators and an easier drive for the, the rest of the display digits. The other things I've done is I've removed AN3 and AN4, you can just see like, one of them is missing here, those resistor networks, I've taken both of those out. And AN2 is still in here, well what I've done, pop this out of the way you can see, you go. There's AN2 next to it still. I've actually swapped it out. The original was a 330K, that's now a 10K instead. So that's a pull up system now instead of a pull down. So I've also got this link here, I've put the original link in here, I ended up putting that back in. I've added a second link going from here to that top pad that did have nothing in that pad. So that's 0 volt up here, that's a 0 volt pad there. So I basically linked that entire link 1 to the 0 volt pad. And just over here, there's a diode, and you can just see it here, I've actually put on a link on that diode as well. I'll just get a different angle. Put a link across that diode, that diode is now shorted out. So that's now shoving 5 volts in directly. So that 5 volts is coming across into that resistor here, which is the point where AN2 gets its common from. So what's that doing is now pulling AN2 up instead of AN2 being pulled down or to a midpoint. It used to be AN3, 4 and 2, the commons were all tied to a midpoint, it's like a mid-rail. So the potential was the same across all the digits if they turned off. That's what was originally there. But what I want to do is I've got those digits floating, but the segments being pulled up. And that takes away any ghost illumination of the segments because I'm driving them harder. And so there's any leakage will show up. So that's helping to do with that. And I think that's everything. So that's what I ended up doing. That's what I set it on. You know, I tried all sorts of things. I tried putting capacitance in, different resistors, all sorts of stuff. I tried all kinds of things to get a good display with as bright as possible enunciators. And this is what I ended up settling on. So there were diodes with those three bridges, the 5 volt rail being used as a pull up to the AN2, AN3 and 4 missing, all the capacitors removed so there's no timing issues. And it means transistors have been driven immediately, like that, as soon as they get driven by the, it's by the logic states. That link in there, obviously, yes, extra link. So, yeah, that's basically what I ended up doing. I spent two days on it, but that's what I ended up doing after trying all different things. Right, let's show you what it looks like when I turn it on. Um, anyway, that's what the display looks like. It doesn't look as good on camera as it does in real life. So I've got an extra film inside on the actual segment section, so from here to here I've got a film in there which is like a purple film and it helps to hide the actual digits so with me looking at it like this I can't really see the digits I can barely see them, barely perceivable and this looks red, it's nice, it's actually quite a nice colour it looks quite good so this looks really good to me got the plus and minus symbol going off here as you can see that's working in here I've also fixed the issue with the inverted display digits over here so I've got an AC you'll now show it 
and it all shows AC as badly as it is but it shows it and then if I do millivolts range it will show millivolts AC so that is working if we go DC millivolts DC or it says millivolts right so that's working I'm not 100% happy with these enunciators I was playing around with an Arduino trying to get it to work it just plugged into the pins on the back of the display because all the voltages aren't nice and clean they're, they're very very noisy and they're jumping all over the place so the steps because of the multiplexing I was having trouble getting it to actually behave properly I had something almost working but it wasn't getting the right voltage level so I'll, that's before I did this final changes to that board as well so maybe now it'll be alright but I'm going to pursue that later on right now I've got a working enunciator the display works I can see plus and minus it's working this I'm happy with I think that's kind of okay it's a little bit dim but not too bad the orange I wanted to try and keep original but the orange is not really coming through well I actually have a higher brightness rating the orange ones so I've got some more LEDs coming and I'm going to potentially replace all of these with some different LEDs I'm hoping that these are brighter if I can get some brighter LEDs then this might be livable I might be able to live with it if I can get it bright enough this could do with slightly more brightness it's not too bad but it's not quite as light as I'd like it to be. This bit here looks really good. I'm really happy with this. That's working great. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Click the bell icon to get notifications about new videos as I publish them. Consider becoming a Patreon if you want to help support me to help me to buy bits of test gear like this which are broken. Maybe develop boards to fix them. Could help other people out too. Catch you later. I'll actually show you what it looks like now. Let's turn it on. When I first turn it on, I still get this weird error. Oh, now it's not turned on. Oh, it worked just now.